Hey guys, this is David from Omega Engineering. We got a lot of questions on how to wire the platinum meter to an Omega load cell and any pressure transducer with a millivolt per volt output. So today we're going to be wiring a platinum meter with an S-type load cell. So to begin with, let's connect the LC101 load cell to the platinum meter. Uh, most commonly, any load cell has four leads coming out. Red being positive excitation, black being negative excitation, green being positive signal, and white being negative signal. So if you look at the back of the platinum unit, on the bottom right, you'll see an input terminal block. So the red lead goes into number six, and the black lead goes into number eight, and the green lead goes into number two, and the white lead goes into number three on the input terminal block. All right, so now that we have wired the excitation leads and the signal leads, let's go ahead and turn on the meter and start programming the meter to read in terms of pounds. So now, as soon as you turn on the meter, you'll see PT flashing and then you'll see OPER for operate. We're not ready to operate yet, so hit the left arrow button two times. You'll see INIT for initialization. Now hit the enter button once, you'll see INPT. INPT stands for input. Hit the enter button once, you'll see PROC for process. Hit the enter button again, you'll see a bunch of different options because this takes in different process inputs. Use the left or the right arrow button, scroll through the different options you have, and you should see plus minus 0 0.05. That stands for plus or minus 50 millivolts, which is perfect for most load cells. And then once you hit the enter button, you'll see type. Now hit the enter button again, you'll see DIFF. We are wiring this load cell to the platinum meter, and we are giving it a differential voltage input. So we're going to be selecting DIFF. So go ahead and hit the enter button again, and you'll see type again. Now hit the left arrow button once, you'll see live, which stands for live scaling. Today we're not going to be doing a live scaling, we're going to be doing a manual scaling using the calibration certificate. So hit the left arrow button again, you'll see MANL. Now hit the enter button once, you'll see RD1. So RD1 is the reading that you have to read when the load cell is not giving you any signal. So which of course should be zero. So hit the enter button once, make sure it's all zeros and now hit the enter button again. It flashes STRD, stored, and then it goes back to RD1. Hit the right arrow button once, you'll see IN1. IN1 stands for the input coming into the meter when the load cell is unloaded. So hit the enter button once. Now this should be all zeros because the load cell shouldn't be getting any signal when it's unloaded. So if you see any other value, make sure you have zero in there. The way you can do that is by using the left or right, right arrows. The right arrow changes the value of the digits, and the left arrow scrolls through the digits. I'm going and changing all the values to zero, and now hit the enter button once, flash the STRD, and then you'll see IN1 again. Now hit the right arrow button once, you'll see RD2. So RD2 should be 2500, corresponding to the max capacity of the load cell that you're connecting this unit to. For today's example, we're using the LC101-2500 or 2.5K. And the way you change that is by using the left and right arrows. Left arrow to scroll through, right arrow to change the digits, 2500. Now hit the enter button once to save it. It flashes STRD and then you'll see RD.2. Now hit the right arrow button once, you'll see IN.2, which stands for the input that is going into the unit when the load cell is at max load. So essentially when you apply the max load on the load cell, the signal that it gives in to the meter, that's what you're gonna be putting into IN2. Now the way you do that is by simply looking at the calibration certificate. So every load cell has a sensitivity. So in this case, the sensitivity is 2.998, and the excitation is preset to 10 volts DC. So 2.998 times 10 would be 29.98, just close to 30. So I'm going to go ahead and enter 30 for IN2. So hit the enter button when you see IN2, and make sure it's 0030. Hit the enter button, boom, stored, IN2. Now we are done with uh, punching in the input parameters that the unit should read at zero and full scale. So now let's go ahead and uh, enable the tear and set the excitation voltage or check the excitation voltage. So now hit the up arrow button once, you'll see MANL again. Hit the up arrow button again, you'll see plus minus 0.05. Hit the up arrow again, you'll see PROC. Hit the up arrow again, you'll see INPT. So now hit the right arrow button once, you'll see tear. Now hit the enter button once, you'll see DSBL. DSBL stands for disable. Now you want tear enabled because if there's no load applied and you see some random value, you wanna make sure that you tear that out. So hit the right arrow button once, you'll see ENBL, which stands for enable. Now hit the enter button once, tear is enabled, it goes back to tear again. So we have enabled the tear, punched in the scaling values. Now all we need to do is to check the excitation voltage to see if it's at 10 volts DC. Or if you have a load cell that is rated for five volts DC, you can set it for five volts DC as well. For that, keep hitting the right arrow button a couple of times. You'll see ECTN for excitation. Now hit the enter button once, 
it's set to 5D. Now, I don't want 5D because if you look at the calibration certificate, this load till was calibrated at 10 volts DC excitation. So I'm going to change this by hitting the right arrow button once to show 10V. Now hit the enter button again, it's saved, flashes ECTN again. Now we should be all set with the scaling. So now all you do is keep hitting the up arrow button all the way until you see INIT. Hit the right arrow button two times, you'll see OPER for operate. Hit the enter button once, you'll see run. And hit the enter button again, you'll see some random value. To tear the unit out, just hit the left arrow button once, you'll see tear. Hit the enter button once, should take you back to zero and you'll start reading zero pounds corresponding to no load being applied on the load cell. So now if you have any dead weight or if you have a known load, you can apply the dead weight or the load on the load cell and you should see the unit displaying the load that is applied on the load cell. So that's it folks, that's a wrap. So we have successfully scaled a platinum meter with the load cell. And as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We'll be more than happy to walk you through it, help you set up the unit, the whole nine yards. We got your back.